Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio presented by Celebs.com up here at TIFF, Alexander Siddick, Ruben Ida. Um, the morning after the big opening, you said you were feeling relieved. What was it? What was the anxiety like waiting for this film to, to be shown to all those people you know and love? Uh, I think it's terrifying because it, like, it just feels like, um, sometimes it feels like my beloved six-year-old niece and letting her cross a very busy intersection by herself and then seeing her survive it. And that's what last night felt like. like. Really what, what, would that stress level have been for any film of, of yours? I mean, but, or, or was there something specific about this film that made you think? You know, I felt this way with Kyra time and I thought that it would get just emotionally better, like I would be a little bit more emotionally mature and <laughs> I'm still not. Like I just, last night, last night I actually thought I was going to have a stroke. So I don't, uh, I, it just feels like it's just getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> this, this film was a little bit more anxious making. Though. It was, yes. Because I mean, not many people risk, uh, you know, deconstructing a beloved thriller format. And uh, yeah. I think that's pretty much what Ruba attempted to do. And uh, whether or not people would be okay with that, laying bare the bones of a thriller and uh, exposing all the sequence and making it really lean and... Uh, I, I, was just, I was really gripping my seat, hoping the audience would enjoy it. Um, of course, you're reuniting with Ruben. You've worked with her before. What is it like kind of re-teaming with a director, and what is it about this relationship that, that works? What is it about this relationship that works? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't we know. like each other is a lame answer, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but it's true. It's, but it is, yeah, it's, it's true. It's a, it's, it is great. It, it cuts all the crap out of the, 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 the communication pro procedure on yes. set once because we know each other so well. Yeah. And it's an intimate relationship and it makes it really easy to get things done in a hurry. Um, and if uh, things start to fall apart, which they often do making really low budget films on busy high roads, um, you can just wink and nod and everybody gets into into position and does stuff really quickly. Yeah. Um, Ruba, I mean, being raised in Canada, but yet having these films that have such a Middle Eastern feel to them, yeah. what is it about your heritage that kind of consumes you in that way to, to kind of keep exploring the, the subject matter? It's funny because that question makes me think maybe therapy would have been cheaper than <laughs> film. I don't know. I, I think it's just, I think it's just, I was born in Canada and I feel Canadian, but it was so jarring to be taken to Damascus at the age of 12 and then to have very integral years of my childhood spent there. And it just left this very uh, unshakable uh, imprint on me. I don't, it's just weird. Is it also strange, like making a film about a region, even if it's a set in the region, yeah. makes you automatically a voice that has to answer questions about the politics of the countries. Do yes. you take that on as a burden or as an opportunity to say what you think? I, you know, it's it's funny. With me, you, you, I, I always, uh, I, I'm a very frank person. So I'm not, an, I try to, I love to engage and I'm very happy that I can shine a spotlight on Syria and at the same time I'm very honest and when I say it I'm not an expert on on Syria I, I, I the way I come at it is from a very emotional personal experience and uh, with this movie specifically like I've been writing it for the last six years and trying to get it financed for a very long time now and so I, I just feel like the more that we can all talk about this region and 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 put it in the context of a very personal story the better but I always try to um, say that I'm not real. I'm not an expert. Like I'm not an academic talking about Syria. Yeah, and the financing. Some of it came from South Africa. Yeah, it, yeah. It's 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 an it's an independent film. So whoever will give me money, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, is I I have a Syrian passport, and so there's no way we could have um, shot in Syria. There's no way that could have happened, and. When I try to scout other parts of the Middle East, I quickly realized that I was going to be in danger because it didn't matter that I was Canadian to a lot of people in the Middle East, I'm still an Arab. 
And so I, the, the, the danger part of, of it for me and the fact that we couldn't get insurance or bond in Jordan because the Arab Spring was really starting to take shape, uh, I quickly realized that I had two options. Either the film was going to fall apart and I wasn't going to shoot it, or I would have to figure it out. And so we decided to go to Johannesburg and cheat it. Alexander, what was that like for you, like going to Joburg and kind of having to kind of recreate not only a country within the region, but the whole region itself? I was super skeptical before I got there. And then when we started shooting, um, when I first saw the set, uh, I was amazed at how exactly like I imagined Damascus to be. I haven't been to Damascus. Yeah. I've seen it on postcards and on TV, like yeah. you know, some people. But I actually I haven't spent much time there. But when I when I got onto that set, it was just fine. I mean, this is exactly what it should look like in the middle of Johannesburg. You look left or right, and there's hot dog vendors and stuff, you know. So it was uh, that that little slice of reality where, where, where that uh, Ruba created was amazing. Your daughter in the film goes to Damascus to find out more about her father, yeah. um, and does so kind of using the technology of the day. Yeah. You now and us now, obviously everyone goes to Google yeah. and you get painted a portrait of what you are via the internet. Is, is like a, have you ever Googled yourself, which I assume the answer is yes, even if you don't want to admit it. My son, go <laughs> my son Googled me uh, five or six months ago and uh, I, had, I haven't Googled myself for a very long time, it has to be said, but the, my, my son did. He sent me a text saying, Daddy, I Googled you and you are 64% gay. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's the thing is, I, I was going to say, like, the information on it, is it correct? I, 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 maybe I am 64% gay, I don't know, and I'm living a 36% existence. No, and I, 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 you can find out all that stuff, but the Arab world is particularly weird, it's, it's nebulous. You can't just Google stuff in the Arab world, you can't just look stuff, it's not on the internet. Um, certainly a lot of uh, Arab histories are pre-1950, all vocal anyway, verbal. So um, there's not vast amounts of research and, uh, and uh, archival material on, on people. I, I think she would have had to go to Damascus. One of your co-stars who's fabulous and looks amazing as always, Marissa Tomei. Um, was there any, like, did you have to really consider whether there'd be anybody kind of criticizing you for casting a non-Arab in an Arab role, or, and why, so why was Marissa right and for this? Well, I think because I'm, as I, everybody likes to say, the Arab world likes to say I'm 100% Arab. My mother's Palestinian, my father's Syrian, and so I, I, I knew that uh, there's, there's no way I could have cast a Syrian actress like that doesn't really exist actually uh, so once I got over that uh, I decided to cast the the best actor possible you know for the role and I met um, Marissa very fleetingly at a party and uh, I just was so wowed by her she she was so feisty and um, like had this vulnerability and and I just thought you know this is the character and and you know Fatima is a is basically no one's subordinate and and Marissa Tomei is such a powerful actor and I thought she's gonna be perfect and she's also Italian and she's very Mediterranean and so there's something about her that was just so similar and so she she looked like my family back home and so we together we decided that we would just create Fatima and w I sent I sent Marissa to Beirut for two three weeks where she just you know became an Arab woman. Well uh, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your morning <laughs> post premiere to come chat to us and Thank congratulations. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much.